What's going on guys, it's Luke from the Lifecast and today you're joining me on more of like a formal sit down discussion podcast with a very close friend I'd consider a brother. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hello guys, um, my name is Azan and I'm glad to join Luke today uh, to discuss a very serious um, situation and a circumstance that is currently going on globally around the world, um, yeah. which is uh, COVID-19. Uh, coronavirus. So um, to begin with, I just want to discuss with you today about some information I have come upon on the internet um, from a medical doctor called Andrew Kaufman. Can we kind of just put a disclaimer out there? Just because Azan is going to have his way to find things on the internet, it doesn't mean it's not credible or like it's a load of rubbish because that everything is out there on the internet for you guys to access and that's going to be a current and consistent theme in today's discussion so i just want to like kind of a disclaimer for anyone who thinks you're going to be chatting a load of rubbish in the next hour or two might be three hours no one knows but you know what i mean i just don't want anyone to have the wrong impression from his on immediately like just watch his video and we can unravel what his thoughts and ideas are yeah that, that's exactly uh, right luke um a lot of the information you find on the internet is credible uh, obviously a lot of it as well uh, isn't credible so you know you, ha- you just have to take all of this with a with a grain of salt but as we continue throughout the podcast you'll see that there are some connections that will be made and you can make your own decisions on whether you believe anything that we talk about today or not, but it should be taken seriously. Yeah, so um, as I was saying before we made that disclaimer just now, is um, that I have been doing some uh, research on the topic of coronavirus and I came across um, this medical doctor called Andrew Kaufman. Now, there's a YouTube video that you can find called Dr. Andrew Kaufman Rejecting Coronavirus. Yeah. Now, we'll have this in the description of the podcast if anyone wants to watch it. Um, now, this video was actually taken down from YouTube and somebody on YouTube uh, re-uploaded it. Okay. okay. Now, Andrew Kaufman is licensed and uh, board certified in psychiatry and forensic psychiatry. He is a former assistant professor of psychiatry at the USNY Upstate Medical University. He's a former medical instructor of hermatology and oncology Medical University of South Carolina. Mm-hmm. So psychiatry residency of Duke University, doctor of medicine, medical university of south carolina and he has a bachelor's of science in biology okay so he's obviously well qualified to talk about this uh, subject of the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic that we currently have going on globally around the world so i just want to get on to what he was talking about so he was talking about um, when a cell gets poisoned it secretes something called exosomes Now, this is part of the natural everyday immune system response to poison cells. Mm -hmm. These exosomes, as they are released, and they are only released when they are poisoned, can be poisoned by many different reasons, such as toxicity, stress and fear, which is obviously what's going on around the world right now with all of this COVID-19 business. And it can also be caused by disease, infection and electromagnetic fields, which we will be getting onto a lot later on in this podcast. Now, the roles of exosomes is that poisoned cells warn other cells that there is a problem or an issue. Sometimes it can do more harm than good as it can overwhelm your immune system. This would mainly cause complications with older individuals and people with underlying medical conditions. Okay. Um, Now, under a microscope, um, what Dr. Andrew Kaufman had found was that when he looked under a microscope of pictures of exosomes, he saw 
that they're basically just like COVID-19 cells and that the gen genetic material and the makeup of them are very similar in very basically every aspect and feature. And that they also lock into the same cell receptors as each other, which is basically very rare. I mean, if you ask any scientist or medical um, person in, in this kind of field, they'll tell you that it's basically near impossible uh, for that to happen in the natural world. Okay. Um, anyway. So there's this test um, that is used to test for COVID-19, which is called the RT-PCR test, uh, which it doesn't actually test for COVID-19 and it actually tests for this gen genetic material, which is made up of a lot of different content. Now this content can be caused and can appear by many different possible causes and reasons. Now, if you test positive for this genetic material, then you are diagnosed to have COVID-19. Now, everything I am saying is actually said in the video. So this isn't just me rambling on about random stuff. It's actually spoken about um, by this med medical professional um, called Dr. Andrew Kaufman that I'm currently talking about now. Yeah. Now, the inventor of this uh, RT-PCR test, his name is uh, Kerry Mullis. Now, sadly, he died uh, last year uh, in 2019. Now, he said this test should not be used to diagnose any infectious diseases. Now, obviously, the coronavirus is a infectious disease. Mm -hmm. This test basically amplifies this material and it makes it look larger than it actually is. And as it gets larger through the cycles of amplification, you will get some positive and negative results. But the more you amplify it, the more positive results you get back from the test. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is if you amplify these tests by a very, very large scale, then everybody will be tested positive in theory. And this also determines how sensitive the test is because around the world, um, they're all using this RT-PCR test, but the sensitivities of these tests are very different because of the, the modeling of how they're made um, and the different material of these tests. So that's very important to note um, there as well. And that Andrew Kaufman also discusses this as well in, in the YouTube video. Now, um, Luke will be asking me questions throughout the podcast, yeah. just so we can uh, clarify some things. So I don't know if he wants to ask any questions now. Do you, do you um, want to ask any questions right now or do you want me to continue? I don't really want to interject, but I just want to have a quick question as to um, if the person who made the RT-PCR scan or test said don't test for, um, you know, infectious diseases, why of leading health specialists actually using it if the person who created it has explicitly said don't use it before he passed away so i feel like this is almost um quite a big like a loophole in terms of the people that are diagnosing people which is quite a big red flag yeah i i completely understand what you're saying um i i've thought about that question myself actually um and when I was thinking about it, I was wondering whether they're using this test just because um, he had sadly passed away last year, meaning that there would be nobody to to kind of like judge um, the use of the test he had made and established. And I think they're also using it possibly because they don't have any other better tests to use or because, as we know, in China, they, they did start using this test. So the rest of the world, um, because they're seeing positive results in China at the moment, mm -hmm. they're thinking, oh, you know, we should be using the same um, testing uh, capacity and facilities. So what I think is happening here is that because it's having good results, they're also using this, um, this testing system. Now, obviously, it's not accurate, no. And a lot of a lot of scientists and 
uh, people in this medical field know that, um, but they are being silenced by uh, the media mm-hmm. and they're not being able to talk about it. And even if people do want to talk about it, they don't because they're worried that they'll lose their their position as well. Now, I was, I'm going to carry on now. Uh, if you have any other questions, Luke, you can always butt in if you want. Yeah, sure. Okay. I've just I'm just writing down notes so I have like a more um, so sound like understanding. So when I talk to other people, I can kind of put my own thoughts um, to other people. So I'll, like, I don't want to interrupt. No, that's completely fine. Like I said, you can ask any questions you want at any moment of time. Okay. Um, just before I do continue, though, I just want to to ask you the same question. Why do you think they they would use a test that isn't uh, reliable or accurate? Um, not necessarily to say that it isn't reliable or accurate in terms of norm, like whatever it's actually meant to test. But I feel like they're using this specific testing. I don't, I'm no, I'm no scientist. Like I can't really tell you, no doctor. I can't tell you why they're using it, but I can tell you the reason in terms of media portrayal of testing is they need to show that they're testing in order to make the public feel a bit more assured and be like, okay, cool, you're you're testing. We're gonna have positive feedback, and we're gonna eventually reach like a vaccine, or we're going to reach a point where it's not a problem anymore and we can live our normal lives but in reality the people at the top and the people that are behind the scenes they know why they're using this testing um strategy but it's not actually testing for corona or covid19 it's testing because they might actually know the fact that it they are finding very similar the cells that you said the um exomes or whatever exosomes and exosomes. yeah the coronavirus cells so, yeah so there must be some, so obviously i don't want i don't really want to jump the gun with that it's man-made and stuff i want you to arrive at your own substantiated point but if i just want to jump the gun obviously i feel like someone who the person who made it they know is very similar to exosomes which is what we naturally secrete so there is a it's a perfect cover-up to line a very supposedly deadly pathogen and a naturally secreted hormone or um chemical Mm. yeah exactly and um later on in the podcast we will be talking about our own opinions and talk about what we think might be uh going on and we're not gonna you know we don't want to fear monger or or worry anyone or anything like that we just want to um give our own opinions and and just um you know show this side of the information that the media is not showing um and they only have one narrative you know they don't like to explore other narratives um so i'm just going to carry on and then we'll be asking questions well luke will be asking questions to me throughout the podcast um and so yeah i'm just going to carry on so um if there's somebody with late stage cancer or severe heart disease at the point in which they are close to having heart failure Mm -hmm and are in hospital and they die, then on the death certificate, it will state that they have died from COVID-19. But, because... oh, sorry. Go on, no, it's all right. Um, but why will they be, basically what I'm trying to say is why will they be said, like on their death certificate that they died from Corona? Did they come in contact or was there, were they originally in hospital for corona but obviously underlying health issues have caused further problems yeah so um i'll I'll get to that in a second so it's good that you're uh you're ahead of the curve right (laughs) so uh, like i said that you know they're in hospital and they die and on the death certificate it will state that they have died from covid19 because they have been tested positive uh to it due to having this genetic material and having the release of these exosomes, which is a natural immune response of the body. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that in hospitals, 
what they could possibly be doing is testing these people as positive to having COVID-19 when they're actually just testing positive for this genetic material that most people uh, will actually have in their system already. Now, the only reason why these cases are being picked up as severe cases is because most of them are people who have uh, severe health problems or elderly people. And we know that elderly people don't really have strong immune systems. As you get older, your immune system isn't as strong as it used to be. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going um, to use a case study and an, an, and an example to explain what I have just established um, to you and the viewers um, who are listening to this podcast. So recently, a man called Eddie Large, you might know him, you might not know him. He was a famous British comedian and he was most well known for his comedy duo that he was a part of called Little and Large with Side Little. It was pub publicly known that, Edley, that Eddie Large had a long-term heart problem. He was admitted into hospital with heart failure. Whilst he was in hospital, he was tested positive for COVID-19 on April the 2nd. Um, sorry, tested positive for COVID-19. See, I'm getting ahead of myself already. <laughs> so excited just to talk about this. Now, on April the 2nd, 2020, Eddie Large had sadly died in hospital. He had died from a failing heart, but COVID-19 was put down as the final diagnosis and cause of death on the death certificate. Yeah. This means that the number of expected coronavirus confirmed cases and deaths could be exaggerated and even possibly made up to make the situation and circumstance sound more critical and dangerous than it actually is. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not accusing the, the, the world governments or, or what I'm, we're going to be talking about later, this uh, possible secret cult that is running the world in the background, um, that all of this is being done on purpose. But it is a possibility that these numbers are being exaggerated and, and manipulated, exactly. So do you have any um, further questions about uh, anything that I just read there, that section of information that I have gathered? Um, not really. I mean, there's there's some questions I want to ask, but I feel like it, it'll be cutting it too early. So I'd rather refrain from now. Okay, that's completely fine. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go on to uh, the next thing that I was going to talk about. So... What I just talked about there is um, basically everything to do with uh, Dr. Andrew Kaufman's um, video. Now, there is some other things he talks about in the video that if you want to go listen to it, then you can do. I've already told you uh, what the video is called. It's called Dr. Andrew Kaufman Rejecting uh, Coronavirus. And we'll have that link in the description also uh, to from this podcast. OK. Cool. That's so good. So now I found a statistic uh, which I found quite um, alarming and quite interesting, which is that 99% of people who have died in Italy have had more than one, two, three or other health problems which they were suffering from or being hospitalized for. Now I can't, I don't exactly have the source uh, with me, but I did come across that um, on the internet. Um, and it wasn't just some random site, it was a credible um, scientific uh, site where they establish um, a lot of statistical information. Now, Lombardy, which, is, which was the centre of Italy's epicentre for the coronavirus um, outbreak there, mm -hmm. is notoriously globally, uh, sorry, notorious, <laughs> sorry, for its toxic polluted air, just like Wuhan, which was also the epicenter uh, for China's um, coronavirus um, spill out, basically. Yeah. Um, now, what this means, basically, is that a high number of people die from lung problems every year because of the toxic and polluted air. Mm -hmm. uh, and now these deaths go into the thousands. 
Now, what I've noticed as well is that the number of deaths caused by other uh, serious issues across the world have plummeted. And obviously, yeah. the coronavirus uh, statistics have gone up in terms of deaths. Now, what we should be seeing is that the cases for other conditions shouldn't be plummeting that much. They should be lowering because of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, but they shouldn't be plummeting the way they are, which a lot of people, which suggests really that the coronavirus is suspected coronavirus is just taking over these other causes and conditions. Yeah. So it's like masking those other conditions, if that makes sense. No, of course. Now, a lot of people might be wondering why they might be making up these statistics or, or making up the coronavirus pandemic. Now, I will be getting on to that uh, later mm-hmm. and be explaining why they, they might want to do this. The, the world governments or this cult uh, that is possibly uh, pulling the strings in the background, in the shadows. So what I'm going to come to quickly is just a report yeah. um, that was put on to BBC News yesterday. And it says here, coronavirus, US to halt funding to WHO, says Trump. Yeah. Now, Donald Trump said this, and this is quoted from his speech that he made yesterday to the United States of America. He said, I am directing my administration to halt funding while a review is conducted to assess the World Health Organization's role in severely mismanaging and covering up the spread of the coronavirus. Okay. Now, I'm going to get to who the second um, funder, highest funder, sorry, for the WHO is. Uh, later on in just a second and it's going to be very interesting in terms of how everything is playing out and how everything is going to play out so i've got so i've got loads of information here for you guys i'm just trying to figure out um what i should tell you first so i'm you know i'm so excited to tell you guys all of this information and to get this out here uh, for all of you guys to know because a lot of this isn't known by the general public and that's mainly because of uh, these news outlets, you know, not giving the other side of the picture. And they're only giving the information they want you to know and not all of the other information out there that's being silenced currently by um, the media and this secret cult in the background, which I'm not saying exists, but there is a possibility that it does. Yeah, it's anyone's anyone's bet exactly so i want to come on to uh, imperial college london for a second Mm -hmm. now imperial college london have these computer models that are supposed to test for certain situations and scenarios so this computer model had previously predicted and tested that the ice caps should should have been melted by now and that major cities like new york uh, should be below sea level yeah. at this moment of time. Obviously, it hasn't because we're all still here and we're not under sea level, <laughs> right? So they had computer modeled COVID nineteen, and this guy called Neil Ferguson, which I which I'm going to be getting into later on, also, um, who is a professor for Imperial College London, had said that. 250,000 to half a million people could die from COVID-19 in Britain. So then Boris Johnson, who is the prime minister um, of the UK, right, uh, decides to lock down Britain and to self-isolate. When London, uh, sorry, when the lockdown happens, Neil Ferguson said that it will be less than 20,000. So basically he uh, on his numbers. Yeah. Now the part of this college that Ferguson actually works for takes funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Mm-hmm. 
And as a lot of people may or may not know, Bill Gates is one of the um, leading people who is funding the, the tackling of this coronavirus pandemic yeah. in terms of actually getting a global vaccination to stop the spreading of COVID-19, but also to try and eradicate it. Um, so funnily enough, there was somebody else at Imperial College London who said that it could be even less and could actually be 7,000 potentially and not as high as the 20,000 that Ferguson actually had established. So um, today, uh, I think the, the numbers of deaths in the UK have are around 14,000 currently. Yeah, as of as of April 16th, 2020. Yeah, that's correct. Um, now, obviously, those numbers might be a complete lie. We don't know because the media are the ones that are reporting it. And they're getting their statistics from a certain organization, which I'm going to come to soon also. Now, like I said earlier, the WHO is funded by the United States government and its second source of funding is actually Bill Gates. Yeah. Okay. Now, WHO, uh, Ted Ross, who is the head of the WHO, was the health minister of Ethiopia and was caught out three times for covering up cholera uh, pandemics in the past. Now, the WHO was made by the Rockefeller family who owned the um, Rockefellers uh, Foundation. Now, there's a lot of evidence um, to suggest that Bill Gates is actually a part of the Rockefeller family's bloodline and is actually related to them, which a lot of people don't know about um, because it, you need to look deep into the Internet and and from out side sources to find this kind of information you'll never find this information on on the top search engines on google for example this kind of information is hidden you know deep deep down in the internet yeah so i'm just going to move on to the next point you know what's funny is how it's it's on the internet for us to find. It's out there for us, but it's not signposted. So you know, like, you no one ever goes past the first page on Google. They never click the second page. There's millions of other results out there, and if you're trying to find certain information, it's not under the title you're looking for. Imagine looking for like that Bill Gates thing, him being related to Rockefeller. It's probably it's probably not even anywhere near mentioned when you Google it. It's only mentioned when you Google something completely left field that's not even related because that's how they're hiding it in plain sight, which is just it just always trickles back up to the top. The people who make the rules and the like the elite people that are just no one knows, but they just they exist. Yeah, exactly. That, that's exactly what it's what it's all about, Luke, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it it all works. And, you know, later on, we're going to be talking about that in a bit more detail in terms of yeah. what we think in terms of our own opinions and views on on how the world is run, but also what's currently happening with this um, coronavirus uh, pandemic. Now, where I was going to lead on to was actually more information to do with Bill Gates, believe it or not. So there are seven vaccines currently being made around the world um, to try and tackle uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Now, every single one of these are funded by Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill Gates was also involved in this event called Event 201, which was a simulation of a coronavirus pandemic and how the authorities will react six weeks before the coronavirus came to the public's attention in China and when it first started spreading. So basically, this event had happened in October 2019. And we all know that the coronavirus 
pandemic started spreading around November 2019. So that's about a month later. We only started really finding out about coronavirus in the new year, 2020. I think it was around mid-January, maybe late January, when we started finding out a little bit more about what was going on in China, uh, which started to shock the world as we know it. I've got a really quick question, if you mind me interrupting. Yeah, that's completely fine. I, okay. I'm open to all questions. Okay, so I just, I was just having this thought of like, okay, it starts in October, November. It starts in October officially, but I really want to track back and find. I'll probably look into this after the podcast because it's probably something that will take time. How the information is released into the public, like, oh. Out of all the things that happen in the world, a man eating a bat and contracting a virus gets media attention worldwide and then it causes a worldwide pandemic. To me, that sounds already really fishy mm. because there's loads of war crimes, there's loads of assaults and, God forbid, like sexual um, exploitation and trafficking and human trafficking, drugs, guns things on like a very dirty like very low level that are happening daily but why did this break news so quickly in such a short amount of time and then within these past five six months the world has completely turned on its back and it's it's like to me that's just like it's hard to kind of overcome that thought of like it it just happening with within a snap of a finger and now the way we live is completely unheard of yeah exactly luke um that's a very uh, good question now in china there are well there's a lot of theories about how the coronavirus came about um which i'm i guess we can get into now i was thinking yeah. you know, i was going i was going to talk about it uh, later on but since you asked the question i'm going to answer your question now so there's a lot of theories one of them being that there was a a bunch of scientists in china that was actually a, a, funnily enough attacked by oh. a swarm of bats that's one of them that i've actually seen another one is that um someone eating a bat which is what you just said mm-hmm. um food like a lot of different raw meat being close to each other, um, cooked meat also being next to raw meat um, in that wet market in uh, Wuhan mm-hmm. that they said the virus had come from. Now, funnily enough, next to uh, that wet market in Wuhan, there is a scientific lab and yeah. their role is um, virology yes and also by bi- biochemical weapons oh, okay. B- biochemistry right next to and it's like a, it's a really high level like high level so yeah, it's quite it, an advanced one isn't it the leading one in the area or china or like you know what i mean it's very perfect to say the least it, it's one it's one of the main biochemistry labs working on biochemical weapons in China and even across the the whole entire world as well. So a lot of people also think that it could possibly, you know, be um, biochemically engineered and was possibly accidentally released or even purposely uh, released and will We'll talk about why later on, why they might have purposefully uh, released it um, into the public and now across the whole entire world. Um, all, you know, we've also talked about the theory where the coronavirus also doesn't exist and it's just these exosomes. So y- you see what we're doing. We're looking at different sides of, of the spectrum and we're not just saying, oh, it's just a natural thing. We're looking at all different possibilities, which is obviously not what the the news is doing you know around the world now i don't know if that answers your question for now obviously we're going to get into more detail with all of that later on as well do you want to extend what i've just spoken about 
No, I'm fine how it is. I mean, we were no, you don't want to expand on it. No, no, nah, it's all good. Okay, so back to this event two hundred one. Now, a running event two hundred one was the John Hopkins organization, who also ran a similar simulation in twenty eighteen. Now, they are collecting the global figures for cases and deaths, which is being used by media companies. Now, also Johnson & Johnson's uh, were also there, who are the leading organization for a vaccine for the coronavirus currently. And they're also helped and funded by Bill Gates. Now, if you look at all of that, you see the connections, how this could have possibly been uh, manufactured mm -hmm. or released purposefully across the globe, or that it doesn't even exist, as um, is one of the theories that we have um, spoken about. Now, t today, sorry, were you just about to say something? No, no, I just took a breath and I was just, I was going to say something, but I just was like, nah, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, you can say it. This is okay. the whole point of podcasts is just to speak our minds, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Hence the life cast was created. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you've been liking it so far. So what I was thinking when you were just speaking, like, if if it is, let's say they, they created this facade of the coronavirus and then it's caused wide mass stress and fear. This links back to your earlier point. Let's say Corona doesn't actually exist. It just exists in our minds, which has then led to us secreting, um, I forgot what it's called. Exosomes. Ex yeah, so mm. we've secreted exosomes through stress and fear and high levels of it because we can't go out to shops, we can't leave the house, we can't work. Some people haven't been able to pay off their mortgage or rent. This is just bundling up on top of stress that they already had prior to this event. Maybe that has caused these symptoms of like coughing and whatever and it's all like man-made within the head not even man-made as a chemical and it's just maybe this is taking things a bit too far to be fair but that's just like one thing one possibility mm. yeah exactly and i was also thinking what possibility could be is that um it could just be the flu but just the worst version of the flu because if you think about it uh, when i looked at i looked at some statistics recently and it said that last year the number of people that died from the flu were was at like a all-time low or yeah. one of its lowest in a very long time so i was thinking to myself maybe it could just be a, a, a worse version of the flu because if you look at the statistics of people that die from the flu every year, mm -hmm. most people that die from the flu, obviously you have your outliers of like healthy people dying from it and, and stuff like that because they just get a bad case of it and they're just unlucky. Yeah, that's biology. That's, simple. that's just biology. Exactly. That's just simple facts and simple biology. But most of those people that die from the flu every year actually have really bad uh, health problems and are elderly people which also fits in with the category of people, most people who die from coronavirus. Mm. So there's a link in that also. Um, so I was thinking about that as well. But, I'm, but I was also thinking about the fact of if it is a mental thing, which it could be, because we all know that these days a lot of elderly people go through a lot of stress because um, a lot of them end up in, you know, in care homes yeah. you know and, and they they a lot of the time they're they're lonely and they they don't see their family or friends that often because they only visit um time to time because they're busy with their own lives yeah and a lot of the time um elderly people worry about paying their bills paying for food just basically paying for anything and it can be really stressful for elderly people especially if they're going through health problems so that can also build up a lot of stress on top of also the stress of them possibly getting coronavirus, which could, and, uh, and then obviously all of this stress could release these exosomes and make them severely ill. Because like I said earlier, um, these the release of these exosomes can overwhelm the immune system. And when your immune system is overwhelmed, then 
it could lead to various serious problems Mm -hmm. and issues uh, both in the short term and possibly the long term and that can also be the same for people who have really bad uh, health conditions especially uh, ones that compromise the immune system just like my mother who has um, an autoimmune disease um, like Crohn's uh, disease Mm -hmm. So that that is a very good um, question, and it could all be mental, and I think that there is a high chance that it could be. Now, I don't want to say that it is, because I don't know for sure, you know, I'm not a a professional in in biology, or, you know, I'm not a scientist. Um, But all I'm doing is doing my own research and just looking at it from a a different point of view. You know, I'm not keeping um, tunnel vision. I'm I'm open-minded, which a lot of people... You know, I, I don't want to accuse people of being open-minded, but a lot of people don't like thinking about other possibilities, you know? No, it's one way or none. Yeah, it's one way or another, you know, how they, you know that song. So, <laughs> you know, they only think one way and they don't like to open their mind up to other possibilities, which I like to, to do because it's just more interesting that way, in my opinion, anyway. So what I was going to do quickly was I was going to come on to this new report that actually came out today on on the BBC News Mm -hmm. Um, and it says coronavirus significant social distancing needed until vaccine found now it says here the UK must keep a significant level of social distancing until a vaccine for coronavirus is found a scientist advising the government has said now, this scientist is the same professor I talked about earlier called Neil Ferguson, who gets funding from Bill Gates in terms of the section of Imperial College London he works for. OK, and the government is taking advice from this professor. Mainly this professor and not any other scientists in the UK. OK. Now, what he says, this is his words. Now, he was speaking to BBC Radio 4's Today programme, okay, Professor Ferguson of Imperial College London. Now, he said easing the lockdown after another three weeks uh, would depend on how quickly case numbers go down. He said that required a single-minded emphasis in government and the health system on scaling up testing and putting in place the ability to track down cases in the community and contact trace. Contact tracing aims to identify and alert people who have come into contact with a person with the virus. The government has announced plans for a contact tracing app, but experts say 80% of smartphone owners must sign up for it to halt the outbreak. Now you can see that this is, as I'm reading this, and as we're seeing these measures of these lockdowns happening across the world they're talking about this app that people have to sign up to now this now you can feel a sense of control already with this um this use of language and measures so what we've got to do is be careful of what we're being told to do by the government and and the who also Now, it says here as well that on relaxing the current restrictions, Professor Ferguson said, what we really need is the ability to put something in their place. If we want to open schools, let people get back to work, then we need to keep transmission down in another manner. And I also, and I should say, it's not going to be going back to normal. We will have to maintain some level of social distancing, a significant level of social distancing, probably indefinitely until we have a vaccine available. Now, a few days ago, this is exactly what Bill Gates had said as well. He said that we're going to have to vaccinate the world's population with a vaccine, mm-hmm. all 7 billion so, heading to 8 billion. But the world's population is around 7 point six billion or something like that it's it's higher than that now but when i saw it that's what it said 
So we've just got to be careful with what we're hearing and we've got to try and connect certain things um, with what's going on. I mean, this is it's a bit weird that this professor Neil Ferguson is saying the exact same thing that Bill Gates had just said like a couple of days ago. Just before the um, Easter bank holiday weekend. So we've got to have that in mind as well. So that's just a, a report on BBC News. If you want to find that uh, with the other report um, that we were talking about earlier, the um, Donald Trump decreasing the funding to the WHO organization, then both of those uh, websites and both of those links will be down in the description also. Thank you. Okay, so do you have any questions about about that or any um do you have any views or opinions about what i've just spoken about there about how um all of that could possibly connect with each other um i to be fair oh, my, my chair is squeaky um i have no like comments on the information itself besides i feel this is one thing i kind of noticed just i think there's one thing you want to notice as you grow up the media will consistently create content for you to um, consume on a day-to-day -day base and they always make it very relatable to the time you're in like they'll give very specific timelines but in the grand scheme of things it's like what they're saying is a load of rubbish because things tend to exceed those given times so something that could be relevant today will still be relevant in December bless us because they're making it last forever in the news and like what you actually see then when something new comes out boom that's like the biggest thing in the news <laughs> yeah so. exactly that's exactly um right you know they can use these numbers to to manipulate the the actions of of people because mm. there are some people that I've I've heard um one of them that's guilty of doing this is my girlfriend. <laughs> now, a funny story is that I've actually been really frustrated not to be able to see my girlfriend because obviously we're all in lockdown and self-isolation. So it's been difficult for me. You know, I love my girlfriend. So what she said is, but the government said so, you know. <laughs> so you've got to be careful with with where you're getting your information from. Yeah. You know, we, we always talk about how with within society and communities, people always lie. You know, even in relationships, people lie to each other. So do you ex what? So you think the government's not going to lie to us <laughs> if we lie to our own family members and friends sometimes? Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's not, you know, think logically. The, the, I think there's a lot of things that the government always lied to us about and and sometimes it might even be out of their control because of the so-called uh, cult that um, I have been talking about um, in this podcast, which if you want to know more about this cult, then there's a, there's a guy on YouTube and you can also find his website. Um, his name's called David Icke and he is actually a professional conspiracy theorist, which I know sounds stupid, mm -hmm. but he's got a lot of information about certain topics such as uh, what happened to um in the events leading up to 9 11 um also what happened to princess diana he talks about um so many different topics um one of them being the coronavirus um, yeah. which is where i've actually gotten a lot of my information from also um on top of dr andrew kaufman as well and he does two great interviews with um, London Real, uh, which you can find on the London Real website, because they were actually silenced on YouTube and Facebook, which, you know, is one of those two companies are one of, well, some of the leading companies in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Which he which he likes to link back to this uh, global cult that is actually pulling the strings and controlling the, the world. And a great example that I like to use is a video game that I've played, which is an excellent video game, uh, which is called Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And um, in that game, it, it's based in ancient Greek times, but essentially there is a cult that is running the world. 
and a part of this cult is um, politicians, is uh, generals of certain armies, and they all wear masks and outfits, so you don't know um, who each other are. You only know their voices. Now, the benefit of that is that the secrets of the cult can't be released into public's knowledge Mm -hmm. and anyone that does know anything about the cult they are silent silenced or or even killed um and and that's what david ike um likes to talk about also and he also connects that with uh jeff uh, jeffrey epstein uh he links that with jimmy savile uh and the royal family and there's a lot of links that he has built up over the years because of the sources he has gotten um, from multiple different people and also the information he's seeked out in books and also on the internet. And another thing that David Icke talks about um, in this interview is the connection between uh, coronavirus and 5G. This is now the juicy stuff. Yeah, this is the this is the juicy stuff. This is where it gets really, really interesting, and and something that we've actually got to watch out for. <laughs> unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, but um, we've always got to keep on guard, you know. Otherwise, you never know. You might get uh stabbed in the back or backstabbed. Um, a lot of people like to use that analogy with um friends that turn on them or something like that. But it's also a good analogy to use with um this cult or or these members of government that know what's going on but they know they can't stop it otherwise they'll be silenced meaning killed or they might lose their position of power and obviously we all know this day people try and strive for power and that can contribute towards greed and you know that's a whole nother discussion for a podcast you know about how the world's run which i don't really agree with but is what it is so uh 5g uh, is a tremendous great greater power of electromagnetic energy and i don't know if you remember earlier when i said electromagnetic energy and electromagnetic uh, wavelengths can actually cause exosomes to be released you did mention that and have noted that in my notes <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So that's a very uh, important to note and to remember. And if anyone uh, or listening to this podcast, I would advise you to write notes on this subject and to pass it on to as many people as you can. Because a lot of people are listening to news outlets and they're listening to the government and they don't know all of this information. I'm not trying to make up your mind um to what and i'm not telling you what you should believe but i just want you to know all of the information before you make your final decision on one on, on what you think is right That's or thing what a lot of the truth is do. they don't a lot of people don't have perspective they don't actually consider other opinions or possibilities and they just immediately decide what is true and what isn't and for anyone watching this it's always good to understand someone else's story or side obviously in the past some conspiracy theories and theorists are crazy they're completely left field but in something that's so prominent and has actual um scientific understanding and professional backing the fact that people just disregard it is quite it's quite um narrow-minded precisely that is completely um that's completely correct. I, I agree with everything you just said, literally. Um, the world is going towards a very a very dangerous path, in my opinion, and we'll start to if be... If it continues. <laughs> if it continues the way it is, then I, I believe in the next few years, or and that's the um, worst case scenario, is the next few years we'll see a dramatic change, but in the next few decades, for sure, there's going to be a lot of changes happening um, in your country, where you are, uh, me and Luke are currently in the UK, um, but globally, this is going to affect people globally. And we're going to talk about why it's going to affect people globally in just a second after we're finished with this 5G uh, discussion and how that connects with coronavirus or how it could connect with coronavirus, because we're not 100% sure if it is connected with COVID-19. 
So now 5G, it's not a little touch from 4G, which is currently what most people are using nowadays with their mobile phones. Um, now 4G, we're able to use the internet outside uh, through the power of using satellites um, and the connection with satellites. Now 5G, it's a whole different, a different spectrum of electromagnetic wavelength from frequency to 4G or 3G or any other G before that. <laughs> Okay, uh, and not when you say "oh hey G" to your friends. That we're not talking about those kind of Gs. <laughs> now, when it is in balance, we are healthy, and when it is in balance, we get ill and we gain diseases and illnesses. What is now this we, on five G? This is on any. This is well four G, currently, and also but going on to five G because five G is in some places, and I'm gonna tell people what places 5G is currently established and introduced at right now or where it's rolling to. But um, I'm just talking about the electromagnetic wavelengths and frequencies as a whole. So that does mean 5G, but it's mainly to do with 4G currently. But it will turn into 5G uh, in the near future. Okay, so currently we are being bombarded 24-7 by electromagnetic fields of Wi-Fi. We have had the introduction in more and more places of 5G during this coronavirus outbreak. Now, every time we have had a global epidemic or pandemic, it has preceded the introduction of another level of power of technologically generated radiation. 5G has had no independent testing Doctors and scientists, scientists, sorry, have petitioned to stop it from being used by the public. Now, 5G poisons the cells which get poisoned by electromagnetic fields. They release exosomes as an immune response and they are being tested uh, for COVID-19 instead of these exosomes. Now, if you go on the internet and you actually look at the 5G electromagnetic grid, you'll see that the countries with the most cases at the moment and the most deaths have the most 5G towers there. And the first, where the 5G was first implemented and introduced was in Wuhan, which is where the coronavirus outbreak began. Mm -hmm which is also something interesting to, to remember. Okay, so what I find really strange and weird is that while the lockdown has been going on, 5G has been rolled out at a rapid rate across the world. This is during a time when everything should be stopped. Non-essential work anyway. And I would count 5G towers to be non-essential, but to this cult, I guess it would be essential because of the impact that they want to leave on human health and human society. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was Elon Musk. Now, Elon Musk is putting more and more satellites into space that are beaming 5G into the Earth mm -hmm. and has permission from authorities to do so during the coronavirus global lockdown. Now, the astronomy fan base across the world are complaining about not being able to see the night sky anymore because the satellites are blocking their view. They are trying to make a sub-reality and force field of electromagnetic fields that will be connected with the human mind with the use and help of artificial intelligence. That's the uh, so-called cults. Um, goal in all of this and i'm going to expand on to that a bit later that's what we're going to be discussing just before we give our own opinions and views on what we think is actually going on with the world now 5g is a range of frequencies and they can increase it and decrease it whenever they want so they can use that to change the implications of the so-called coronavirus so basically what I'm saying is that they can turn this these 5G frequencies down and when they turn it down, they could say, 
oh, the peak has gone down or, you know, the peaks across the world have gone down and the numbers are decreasing in terms of the number of confirmed cases, uh, the number of confirmed deaths. And then when they turn up the 5G uh, magnetic electromagnetic fields and wavelengths, then they can say, oh, the waves have come back and oh, the numbers of deaths have increased, which I have heard some scientists say that there are going to be other waves of this coronavirus. So it just makes sense why, they, why they're rolling out 5G towers now across the world so when we're all supposed to. Exactly. So they can manipulate the numbers. That's what it's all about. Now, there is this New York doctor. I don't have his name at the moment. I'm sorry about that. But I, I had read about this uh, New York doctor um, talking about the coronavirus. Now, this New York doctor has been working at an emergency ICU unit. Mm -hmm. and, and he says that this, what's currently going on, it's not COVID-19. He said that he has never seen anything like this in the lungs of these people ever before. He said that their lungs look like someone who is flying at 30,000 feet and as cabin pressure disappears, the oxygen disappears and they are slowly dying due to the lack of oxygen. Now, 5G at 60 gigahertz, which is one of the highest, higher frequencies that they can put the 5G electromagnetic wavelengths at, stops the human body and blood from absorbing oxygen. Mm -hmm. If anybody is hit with 60 gigahertz of frequencies of 5G, they won't be able to gather oxygen and therefore won't be able to breathe. Now, this links in with how they are building morgues in many different countries and are having loads of preparation for loads of dead people. Now, it will look dumb and stupid if the rate of infection goes down and also the death rate. The more they expand 5G, the more 5G is going to impact on the population's health. And the more it does this, the more they can say it is caused by COVID-19. Now, they are putting 5G in hospitals and schools whilst everybody is locked down. OK, this is happening currently right now. There have been people in places like New York who have gone to war zone hospitals where it's been reported widely by the media that these hospitals are overwhelmed and they look like war zone hospitals. People have gone to these hospitals and have recorded with their mobile devices inside these hospitals and they've been absolutely empty. No one's been in these hospitals. They're wow. cleared. There's nobody in them which I find very, very weird. And these people have been arrested for at least three months in jail and even longer in some cases. So you can see how the government are trying to silence these people and, and stop them from showing the world what's going on. And I don't know if you remember this, but in, Ch in China, when this uh, uh, coronavirus um, the spreading, sorry, of this coronavirus was happening in China, they said that they were being so overwhelmed by the increased number of cases that they had to build new hospitals. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as those hospitals were built, only a few days after or a few weeks after they decided that, oh, oh the spreading stopped now and all of these patients had, um, had disappeared, apparently and they no longer existed somehow yeah. and i find that very strange because now if you look up china and what they're doing they're actually opening up their country again and they're allowing flights to come in and out of china again and they're trying to and they're, and they're starting to take uh the lockdown measures um down you know yeah. they're, tr they're they're pulling back on the lockdown measures which I find very weird because obviously this coronavirus pan pandemic and spreading has been happening in China since November. And they only started uh, introducing the lockdown in maybe late January, mid-Feb. Mm -hmm. So that means that it would have been spreading for a couple of months. Yeah. So there's no way that they, were, that they would have been able to, to open up 
everything again by this time. It's just mathematically, it's it's basically impossible. So that's another thing. And that's what the New York uh, doctor had said about this. Mm -hmm. And basically, 5G at 60 gigahertz stops the human body and blood from absorbing oxygen. If somebody is hit with 60 gigahertz of frequencies of 5G, they won't be able to gather oxygen and therefore won't be able to breathe. Now, I've already said that, but I just wanted to repeat that to everybody to just show you how severe this could possibly get. Now, there is currently a study coming out very soon, next month, I believe, the beginning of next month, at around the 1st of May. There is a scientific report coming out about 5G and the possible health problems and issues that it could cause. Now, they've done some tests on with 60 gigahertz of uh, 5G electromagnetic wavelengths. And they were seeing the impacts, uh, sorry, the impact of it on rats, which is obviously that rats are small creatures compared to humans. And these rats started gaining brain tumors and heart tumors because of the exposure of these 5G frequencies. Now, what the scientists said in these reports, now, the only reason why this report was found, it was found by... Uh, this guy that I watched on the YouTube video, I forgot his name, uh, but he has actually been a leading activist for not using uh, 5G or even 4G or any other Gs before that. He's been a leading activist in courtrooms um, to try and stop this. Now, what they said is that it's hard to to say if it will do any damage to humans because humans are bigger than rats, first of all. Um, there's the biggest surface area, so we, they don't know if it would impact us as much. But they said it's also hard to measure the environmental uh, aspect of it as well. Yeah. What that means is that once there's 5G all over the place, because we're going to be exposed to 5G everywhere, um, if that means uh, traffic lights, lampposts, uh, our mobile phones, our smart TVs, our computers, basically anything that can, that 5G can be used for, if that is everywhere, then that means that's going to be exposed to, to loads of different people. And I'm sure people that live close to these 5G towers are going to be e affected by them even more uh, uh, with these 5G electromagnetic frequencies and waves. Now... There is this company called Ofcom, who is the regulator of British broadcasters, and they have said, and it is run by Melanie Dawes. Mm. Now, she has told British broadcasters that they will face serious sanctions if they televise anything to do with 5G and the connection of it with COVID-19. Now, people in Silicon Valley have told media outlets and organizations to ban whoever tries to connect COVID-19 with 5G. Now, that is very, very suspicious. And we'll get onto that in just a second and why that is suspicious. Now, they don't want it to be discussed because there is a possible link. The organization that runs the license for 5G is Ofcom. So obviously they wouldn't want this to be televised because it could have a, a, a very bad implication for their future profits and, um, and their rollout of 5G across the world. Now, I've got a quote here, which is the control of perception means the control of behavior. Perception comes from information received. Now, that's got to do with everything to do with what the media is telling us and what they want us to believe. So be cautious with what you're told, not just by the media, but also by especially strangers and even the person you're in a relationship with or your friends or your family. But you gotta be cautious, but you don't worry about it every day, basically.
but you still have to be cautious to some extent because if you're not cautious then it can come and bite you in the backside when you least expect it so you want to be ready for that you know the, the, i've always said there's always been three kinds of people right one kind there's the these one kind of people which is uh they say oh well the government said so and they believe everything the government say or the news outlets say the media basically yeah now the second type of people are people that say oh well even if it was true we can't do anything about it anyway so what's the point and the third type of people which is that they seek out the truth and they like to look at things from different pers- perspectives and they don't like to to look at things in just one way basically in a tunnel vision kind of sense so those are the kind of three people groups of people in this world um in my opinion i don't like the ones in the middle because they know there's something fishy going on but they 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 don't want to do anything about it basically no. they're lazy <laughs> and they and they they can't be asked to to try and make things better at least the people in the first group because they believe because they're so naive sometimes you can't blame people for them being naive because most of those people are people that don't use the internet or don't have access to the information we have so that's why we're we're delivering this message to our audience in in the live cast which is obviously the best audience on on youtube and the best audience on the internet and I'm also part of it. We're all we're all a part of it. We're all a part of the life cast. Because that's what it's all about, life. I love that analogy. Exactly. It's just the perfect analogy to have. And we've, more than ever now so, we have to try and work together. You know, because the world is going, like I said, through a dark, dark path. I believe anyway. And we'll talk about that later. I keep saying that, but that's when the juicy bits are going to be coming in later on also so do you have any questions right now about what i've said or do you have any opinions or views on on anything i've just discussed well considering the past hour and a bit that we've been talking obviously i've been formulating ideas but i've also kind of said them as they came and in terms of what you've said there's nothing i have any extra opinion or thoughts on but rather like to recap at the end or kind of just we can have like a little Q and A session based on what you found and what I think about everything and we can go from there. Yeah that's completely fine. So what Luke is currently doing as I said he's writing down uh questions. Uh so we can get to the questions at the end of our conversation and just try and clear up anything that you guys might be a bit confused about or might want to for us to expand on basically so i'm going to come to the vaccines the possible vaccines that will be coming uh in the maybe near future or even the future so what bill Gates had said the other day on uh, BBC News, he was being interviewed by one of the reporters um, on BBC News about uh, vaccinations and the current situation and circumstance that we have ourselves in, in terms of the uh, lockdown and self-isolation at home, basically avoiding anyone or anything. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill Gates said that there might be a case where we have to get a vaccine uh, within six months is the earliest when uh, of when we can get this vaccine now he said the only bad thing about getting that vaccination um is that it could have severe health problems or health issues or symptoms um side effects to it if we uh do it in the short term because what normally happens with vaccinations is that they test on people and they watch for what the side effects could possibly be during a two year duration. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is that we don't have two years. So he's saying what we might have, (laughs) he's saying, exactly. He's saying what we might have to do is we might have to take the risk. But then if he's saying everyone in the world has to take this vaccination, the vaccination could actually be more deadly than this actual 
pandemic that's going on if we're not careful i mean bill gates there's there's so much evidence against bill gates for for what he's done in the past how his previous vaccinations that he's funded or created have actually paralyzed people and individuals in africa and india and how those people have been paralyzed for life or how they how they've got certain infections or certain uh diseases because of it and some people have even lost their lives because of bill gates so you got to remember this is the kind of guy that we're dealing with some people think he's a psychopath some people think he's a genius okay it doesn't matter what you think about bill gates all you have to look at is the evidence okay just look at his past and then everything will look clearer but in this vaccination what David Icke says and what he is predicting is that in this vaccination, there will be a lot of genetic material which will release more exosomes, but that there will also be nanotechnology microchips. Now, these nano microchips will be put into our bodies and will act like ground antenna to the satellites um, and we will be connecting to them um just like the ground antenna basically and we'll become nothing more than computer terminals now what those nano um microchips can also be used for is to track people uh and see where they are and where they're located now we're seeing uh a little bit of this in china in china uh there was this documentary done about how they are run now in China, they have a point system. So if you listen to what the government tell you, then you gain more points. Yeah. And obviously with more points, you gain more benefits. Now, if you don't do what the government say, they they don't give you as many points or basically no points. And what that does is that gives you loads and loads of disadvantages. Some of them being that you can't travel to other countries and you can't even travel on like buses or trains. So obviously that's a really big disadvantage yeah. it's kind of as if they're trying to isolate you and and they're trying to take away your freedom by saying oh if you don't do what we tell you to do then we're going to take these luxuries away from you which they shouldn't be luxuries they should just be human essential rights, human rights yeah human es essentials you know they shouldn't be things that that should be taken away from us just like how our freedoms kind of being taken away from us now during this lockdown so that is a really serious uh, situation and circumstance. And obviously now I've pretty much talked about everything to do with the coronavirus from notes, I believe, Luke. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to go on to now is just go into a discussion about, oh, actually, just before I go on to that, actually, I just remembered something is Elon Musk. Now, Elon Musk is currently making this new business, this new company. Now, Elon Musk had said that um, that artificial intelligence could have a really bad impact on humanity mm -hmm. and humankind. Now, he's making this company called Neuralink, which plans to start testing its technology on human volunteers during the second quarter of 2020, which is basically we're, we're at that right now, coming close to it. Now, it's pending FDA approval. Now, it'll probably get passed because Elon Musk most likely works for this inner circle cult. Now, Neuralink will drill four eight millimeter holes in their, in their skulls, the human skulls, and then insert threads that will pass neuronal basic yeah, data to an implant behind the ear. So he's saying that artificial dangerous and could be the end of humanity as we know, but he's making a company that is connected with computers and artificial intelligence. It just doesn't make sense to me, to be honest no. with you. Now that report, I that little section of that report I just read out to you was done by a by a website called technology review which is a very well known uh website which you can find a lot of um information to do with um 
technology um, on there. That report was made on the 17th of July 2019. So that was last year, before all of this coronavirus stuff started to come out. <laughs> so that's something you've got to remember. Now, that was very, very significant. And just one other thing I found out the other day is that there's this guy that was called Aaron Swartz. Aaron Swartz. Now, Aaron Swartz was an American computer programmer. He was an entrepreneur, writer, political organizer, and also an internet hacktivist, whatever that is. Okay. Now, on the 11th of January 2013, Aaron Swartz had died. Now, the reports on the news had said that he had committed suicide uh, by hanging himself. Now, what I find a bit weird about that is that before Aaron Swartz died, he was an activist against the use of 4G, 3G, and any other possible past or future Gs. Um, and he was trying to tell everyone about the dangers of 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 those because he was a really smart guy um, and he ended up committing suicide by hanging himself so whether he actually died on it or he was killed or silenced is a whole other uh, debate but it is a possibility or all, all of this stuff could have gotten to him you know that people tried might have tried to get to him and he might have just been so stressed out that he just you know commit suicide so all my wishes and prayers go to, to his closest friends and family and and uh, and I hope um, that nothing like this will happen again. So you've got to think about all of these different things and, and you've got to connect them. Now, another question I've gotten to people who I've told this theory to um, is why with this so-called coronavirus pandemic? And that's a very, very good question. Now, we come to why they would do that. Now, why they would do that is that everybody will lose their income, their jobs, businesses, livelihood, um, so that they are basically solely depending on the state. We already see that happening in America with this surplus um, payments being given out to everyone. I think it's around $1,200 or something like yeah, that. I think they increased it again. They made another one, didn't they? Like two thousand, might be. They I might. Be wrong, but. They might have, but I'm, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, but anyway, everyone, everyone in America is getting surplus checks, okay. Stimulus. And I'll become just, just in case people get a bit arsy on that. Sorry, stimulus. Yeah, that's correct. Um, like I, you know, I, I haven't done much research in that, but all I know is that that people are getting some kind of money by the government some kind of aid now what they want i believe is that they're trying to get you dependent on this money which means that you are going to have to listen to the government in order just to get essentials like food they won't have a choice in the matter anymore and will have to listen and do whatever the state tells them they will have total power and control over the surplus population. So the idea that we're talking about is kind of like a Hunger Games um, society idea or the book, a well-known book called 1984, um, which is a draconian fascist, I can't say that word, fascism uh, society, um, which basically means there's going to be a cashless society a world government controlled by dictators and only a few people which will probably end up being this cult uh, members of um basically politicians and even possibly people in silicon valley that, that's looking very highly we're already seeing silicon valley taking over the world they've got so much power compared to to governments across the world and we're already seeing it happening. I'm very worried about what's happening. I think they're getting us used to, to being locked down into our homes. I think they're getting us locked down to, to this feeling of being isolated. Um, 
and with isolation obviously comes um less thinking um feeling more like you're not in control basically our freedom being taken away from us which we don't want we want to keep our freedom even though we don't really have freedom right now anyway but it's going to get worse in my estimations in 1984 if no one's read the book i'm about to spoil it now i think everyone's knows what happens in the book because most of us had read it in school now now in 1984 i forgot the the main character's name but basically he sees that there's something wrong in society and he knows it's not right so what he tries to do he tries to kind of find out the truth about how the society is run and he tries to to like stop how the society is run and by the end of the book they brainwash and manipulate him so much and they use his fears against him his main one being rats to brainwash him and manipulate him so much by by doing that at the end of the book he forgets what he was even doing at the start of the book and he forgets what his purpose is and and basically he's just controlled mm. and he doesn't even have his own thoughts and feelings he only has this one way of thinking which is the way the government want you to think which you see is happening around the world now or it's starting to happen you know so many people are worried about coronavirus when the death rates are so close to the flu or even lower than the flu, you know, and, and the cases are being, and the only reason why the death rates look high is because the amount of confirmed cases are lower than what they should be because of the lack of testing. Now, if they tested more people and as the confirmed cases start to rise and rise and rise, then that the, the percentage of the death rate is going to look lower, isn't it? Of course. So that's what I'm. Well, that's what we, what I'm trying to establish here. All I'm saying, all me and Luke are saying, in this podcast, is just to open your eyes. Okay, see what's going on. Put two and two together, as they like to say. Look at the information. Look at what we've told you today. Read through the links in the description watch the videos in the links of the description and then after you watch this and you watch those and you read up on all of this then you can come to your final decision on what's happening because all you have to think about is look in the mirror and look at yourself and tell yourself is this how i want to live my life you know do do you want to live your life like this in in this kind of environment do you want your potential kids or grandchildren to grow up in a potential society like the one we've been talking about like a, a a communist society but it's even worse than a communist society it's the hunger game society it's the 1984 society it, and if you read or watch the if you read or watch the hunger games or even 1984 then you'll see the implications and the problems and issues that that kind of society can have on a country but not even a country the whole world yeah of course so we've just got to be careful and wary about the steps we take and i'm telling you right now if a vaccination comes out for covid19 i will be refusing it but now the problem with refusing it is that i've heard that bill gates is saying that they might have a stamp system so if you don't have this vaccination and you won't have a stamp, which means that you won't be allowed to go outside without having the mm. vaccination, that is that is control over the population. That is controlling people's um, actions and decision making. How can you say to people, if you don't take this vaccination, that you don't know what's in it, if you don't take this vaccination, then you can't go outside. That's taking one of the biggest liberties and one of the biggest human necessities that we have which is nature which is the outside world we grew around nature we come from nature we're distancing ourselves 
so much so away from nature that we don't even acknowledge nature that much as much as people did in the past you know when people go outside they don't look at the trees or the flowers they don't breathe in the fresh air people are always thinking about their problems and their issues and and they're always looking at things like cars instead or buildings instead instead of the plants and and the the trees and the flowers so i know i'm going into a bit of a more um personal perspective on it but i i believe that if it gets more personal and you talk about things in a more personal uh tone then i believe it will connect with people um in a more honest and truthful way definitely i think people need to open their eyes to say the least because um i know this doesn't really connect in with coronavirus as much but it's just a quick point i want to make there's so many teenagers that i talk to who suffer from mental illness you know um me being one of them depression and anxiety i don't like to make it public because i don't want to i don't want to make people feel sorry for me or or i don't want to use that as an excuse basically to get away with certain things if i make a mistake it's my fault it's not it's not my mental health um leading that I talk to so many teenagers and when I try and have comprehensive discussions with them and ask them about their opinions and their feelings and their and just the way they feel they don't want to do it it's as if they they're trapping themselves and isolating themselves from their their own thoughts you know whenever I talk to someone they always give one word answers or two word answers and I'm, I'm I get so frustrated because I'm like come on you should talk more in depth you know, there should be more explanation and more analysis behind your your answers. Mm, it's discouraged from a young age to speak up. A lot of people are socially anxious, and I'm one of them. But I people are even worse than I am, mm. and I see it on a day to day basis. And it's not good, and it's very worrying for me because that shows me that people are more likely to to listen and ab- and oblige to to like laws and listen to go- the government and <clears throat> basically be controlled yeah w- without thinking through the possible um dangers effects that those decisions um could lead to so i mean I've pretty much discussed everything I wanted to discuss about the topic of coronavirus. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to double check my notes just in case I've missed anything. It's just watching out and being wary of these draconian measures uh, that are being used currently. Um, And just make sure you open your eyes and just think about things more. That's what we're asking for, really. Not asking, asking <laughs> for. God, when you talk a lot, your English start skills start to go start downhill to a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I think I've pretty much talked about uh, everything to do with it. So if you have any uh, questions, Luke, that you want to ask me, um, then I'm happy to answer them. And any questions that people have, put them in the comments and we'll be we, we should be able to to get to those and answer those for you as best as we can we like to di- we like to see discussions and conversations between exactly. people um in the in the description uh, not in the description in the comment section sorry <laughs> god um, i have i have nothing really to to build upon like you know questions because i feel like you've answered everything and all my queries without even having them asked to you because you've covered everything how I would have imagined someone who is professional to cover everything and the fact that you've provided a storyline and a timeline at the same time has made things much better so for anyone who 
was watching this video and was less educated on the topic, you've been able to basically articulate everything in a roundabout way so people can understand like there is something happening that is much greater than what we think and it's good to have some sort of understanding so if anything does happen or the small little jigsaw pieces start to fit in together you kind of can um you can identify that before anything else happens and much bigger consequences are apparent so i really appreciate you taking that you took your time before this podcast and the previous few days to actually write down this notes and get investigating um you know thank thank you luke for for having me in the uh the life cast you know i've always been uh interested um to come on here and to, to discuss about different subjects um so i'm glad you you brought me on here and i hope that i could be a part of um future projects and discussions as well i definitely definitely will i mean i was gonna mention that after the podcast i just i also want to say that um that there is a that there is a great speech that that is done by Charlie Chaplin, which I think would be a really good note to leave this video on. Absolutely. Um, we will edit that video into the end of the podcast. Yeah. Um, please watch it. It's very inspiring. Um, it's all about bringing us all closer together during uh, tough and difficult times, um, because that's what human nature is all about. That's what he, being human is all about. Is helping one another and seeing all of us succeed and and you know try and lower rates of depression and lower suicide rates and just try and be kinder to each other be nicer to each other you know there's so many people out there that are that are evil and just disgusting human beings that like hurting other people with their words and actions and i think i think we've got to be careful with this current lockdown situation because we were or before this we were already distance distancing ourselves from one another but now because of this lockdown we're even distancing ourselves even from one another yeah and for human the human race to carry on and to for us to, to succeed and thrive you know in the future then we need to stick together that's the whole reason why we're here now is because of at the very beginning we all worked together to build what we have today yeah absolutely. the foundations were built through togetherness through communication and through teamwork so we've got to remember that it's very important to remember that so just remember next time you you see someone that you've wronged or you've been rude to or you've had an argument with just apologize to them or tell them how you felt at the time i'm sure they'll understand why you you acted in that way and just try and get over these stupid little arguments that people have and just stop hating one another because of stupid pathetic reasons we have more things more important and significant things to worry that's what i just wanted to say um, so just make sure you watch this Charlie Chaplin video. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. And make sure you keep yourself safe. Make sure you keep your family safe. And um, and thank you for having me, Luke. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I appreciate you taking your time to do everything beforehand and actually sitting down for this video. So I just want to say a big thank you to anyone who's watched all the way through and has paid keen attention to actually listening to what is on said because it obviously takes time to investigate and find out <clears throat> for yourself so it's always good to know that people are out there that have the information that you need so you can formulate your own opinions so um if there's anything you want to plug us on like your social media pages or anything um I would plug my uh, social media um, plugs, plugins, but um, 
what I might do is I might just um, leave something somewhere in the video because I, I'm not going to lie to you. I can't 100% remember what they are right That's now because I've been so concentrated on all of get, gaining all of this information. Um, don't worry. Okay. But I'm sure, I'm sure you'll leave some. Absolutely. For I mean, me. everything, so for you guys out there who are still here, everything will be in the description below, all the links. Or everything, everything you need to know is gonna be in the description below and in this video. Hassan's social medias will be in there as well, so are mine and Casper's, and all of our Twitters and whatever, Instagram, just so you can get in contact with us directly to talk to us if you ever need anything. So, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone. Thank you to Hassan, the guest of this podcast, and future, he will be a future guest and he's gonna make something of himself <clears throat> in the future. 100% I believe in him always have done I just want to say <clears throat> make sure you do leave a like and subscribe hit the notification bell because we are uploading weekly and these kind of podcasts are one off but they're one off in the terms like they're going to be consistent but they're just not going to be every week because we can't <laughs> we can't be repetitive so without further ado thank you everyone for watching thank you Azan very much for being here that has been the live cast Signing off. <laughs>